<laughs> Welcome. I'm Pamela Rickia from livingjoyfully.ca, and today I'm here with Heather Clark. Hi, Heather. Hello. I first met Heather at an unschooling conference a few years ago, right? It was uh, Unschooling's right. platform, yeah. And I have really enjoyed glimpses into their unschooling lives ever since because we connected online. And I'm so happy that she agreed to chat with me and tell us a bit more about their unschooling live. So to get us started, Heather, can you share with us a bit about you and your family? Sure. So of course, we're the Clark family and I'm Heather. And then we have my husband, James, and we have our son, Jamie, and he is 12 years old. And then actually, we also share households with my mother-in-law. Her name is Sue. Uh And so... James is a software developer and his entire team works remotely. And then um, he and I have been married for 19 years now and together for 23. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. We just had our anniversary last week. So, oh, that's sweet. Ours is coming up, I think. Ooh, I think 23. Yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, once, you th- once you think about it, right? <laughs> I know, right? You just, just kind of live in it. And every once in a while, it's like, oh, yeah, by June, I'll figure it out. <laughs> exactly. So I, I manage websites for a living. Um, like I said, James is a developer. And then, of course, Jamie, our son, he just recently turned 12 years old. And his big thing is also computer related. He is into game development right now and digital art. So that's kind of his passion right now. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's fun, isn't it? To, to kind of the connections between everybody, right? It is. Yeah. And his is obviously in kind of a different direction from the two of us, but it's still somewhat related. So. Yeah, no, I know. Mike, Mike's been doing some game development on the side. Too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I used to program many years ago, but you know, it's completely different software and everything, but it's the same approach, right? The same solving a puzzle thing when you run into something that's not working and trying to debug it and figure out how things are going. It's, it's really- right. <laughs> so I would love to hear the story of how you guys discovered unschooling and what your family's move to unschooling looked like. Sure. Well, actually, I'll tell you just a little bit about our parenting approach and then how that led into our unschooling, if that's okay. So we, from the beginning, we've kind of been um, independent thinking, and I don't think it was any surprise at all to our family that we were doing things a somewhat non-traditional way. So we, (laughs) starting with our pregnancy, I was on a lot of um, forums and and, um, places for like attachment parenting and unschooling um, had come up there and um, homeschooling more specifically, but I had heard of unschooling, but um, we were, we knew we wanted to homeschool because we knew we wanted to travel. And also because um, our, our attachment parenting from the very beginning kind of led things down a different path. So we, uh, my husband, uh, we, decided almost immediately that we wanted to stay home. We wanted someone home with Jamie. We didn't want to put him in daycare. Um, We were already letting him sleep and wake when he wanted, which was different from what everybody was telling us to do Uh when he was (laughs) sharing with us, which was different from what people thought we should be doing. And so um, we were kind of already down that alternative path. Um, Then, uh, Jamie was about two years old and he still wasn't speaking. Um, so we, we started to look into that and what might be going on there. And we figured out that um, our state had an early intervention program where for birth to age three, where they will um, give free evaluations and offer services. And so we kind of went down that route trying to figure out what was going on with his not talking. And um, that kind of diverted us for a bit. So they um, they offered speech services at our house, and that was going fine. Um, Jamie wasn't getting a lot out of it, we didn't feel, but he also wasn't disliking it. So we continued until right as he was about to turn three, they pushed very hard for us to put him in preschool when he turned three. And so even though we'd been planning to homeschool the whole time, they were pushing so hard on us, telling us how much that they thought that that would help and just how important that they felt that that was because he was 
that he was aging out of their early intervention services, they wanted him to go into the school-based services. services and so, yeah. yeah, so they they really pushed on us for that. And so probably as much to get them off our backs more than anything, we thought, well, let's consider preschool. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll look at it. Yeah. And, and so we looked around and we found a um, Montessori styled preschool that we thought about sending them to. And so even though it felt so wrong, <laughs> we decided to send him to preschool and see if it really helps like they said that it would because they thought that if we got him away from home he would have to talk and if he had the other kids there he'd have the social motivation and he'd want to talk all of a sudden and we quickly figured out that that was absolutely wrong and so we should have trusted our instincts but so that was our only foray into into school um, but immediately I started looking into okay no this is not going to work we're going to stick with our homeschooling plan started looking around started finding out more about unschooling and that's when I started to to look for resources so I joined some at the time it was yahoo groups yeah. um, always unschooled and uh, unschooling basics and some of those and um, we just kind of went from there and didn't look back Unschooling came really naturally to our family. It already fit in with what we felt like we were doing with our attachment parenting. And so the more we learned, the more we stepped from um, into radical unschooling. So we, we started learning more and just little by little, we just kept adding more and more of those pieces in. And so Jamie's had like four days of school <laughs> and we've just continued our non-traditional path other than those few days and, and moved on with things from there. That is an awesome story. And, and thanks for sharing that whole background. I really love how that flowed. And I'm curious, so how did you, um, those four days of school, you said, you know, you quickly knew that it wasn't <laughs> going to be a good fit for you guys and then that dove you back into looking at homeschooling and finding unschooling etc so I was just curious how that uh little that turn went you know was was Jamie not enjoying it was it something that you saw I was just curious about that sure no from the very beginning so um we were concerned because he didn't have the speech. And so he wouldn't be able to tell us if something was wrong. He wouldn't be able to, to, and he also, we weren't sure he was going to be great at things like following directions. And that was really, um, they had told us that he just had expressive speech issues. So he wasn't talking and we knew that, but what we didn't realize is once we got him out of the home environment, we found out that he also had receptive speech issues. So he wasn't understanding what was going on and what was being said to him in the classroom. And so he obviously wasn't following their directions at all. Yeah. And a lot of things just didn't make sense to him, but also to us. So for instance, um, in some Montessori environments, and this just happened to be one, they're kind of rigid about how they, ha they have their things set up in stations. And so for instance, he wanted to use this spray bottle that was for the window washing task, but he wanted to use it for the plant watering task and spray the plants with a spray bottle. And he got in trouble for that because that is not how they're meant to be used. Or for instance, he they, they told us that um, he was moving through activities too quickly. He'd do something and he'd finish it. And he felt that was good enough. But they wanted him to keep doing that activity over and over again to master it. And that was just not working. And so like every single day they were telling us, you know, that he was doing things wrong. And we just weren't comfortable with that because, you know, it was his first foray into preschool. He had just turned three years old and we were already getting reports that everything he was doing was wrong and needed to be changed. And then they started suggesting that we also change how things were going for us at home and start to enforce their school-based rules at home. And we were not, not at all comfortable with that. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you very much oh, for no, sharing that. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. That makes so much so much sense. Yeah. Yeah, that that was part of our transition too. I mean, it took me way longer. <laughs> but yeah, the you know, the person that that they are at home that that we know and we understand, like like you said, like you knew him even though, you know, he wasn't 
able to express himself yet, or maybe even, you know, picking up not, not as many clues or certainly in a whole new environment. Right. Um, right. and, and trusting them more than trusting the outside voices. Right. And what they were trying right. to mold. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Um, so let's jump ahead now. And right now, uh, I, I know you guys travel and last I read it, you're doing about like half a year traveling and half a year back at your home base with, mm -hmm. with, uh, your husband's with his, with his mom, right? That's right. kind of where your home is. That's awesome. And I would love to hear this story about how you guys chose to embrace travel. Now, it, when you were talking about um, your move to unschooling, you you were thinking about traveling um, when Jamie was very young, right? Right. Yeah, that's cool. So, that's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'd love to hear the story about how that came about. Sure. Yeah. So, um, James and I had already done some travel before we ever had Jamie and right away after we had him, we almost immediately got him a passport. And so his first out of the country trip was when he was just a couple of months old. Mm -hmm. And so we knew we liked to travel. Um, for me, travel was a big thing when I was growing up. I didn't get to travel, but I was really interested in the world and learning about the world. And so I did everything that I could, um, basically accept the travel. And so we, we kind of knew that we wanted to do that with him. And so um, when he was about two years old, we actually came up with this crazy idea that we called our boat plan. We, we, um, James found out that there were people who live aboard, but there are also people who do that with kids, which was something we had never even considered. So I was a sailor, um, and so we started to look into that and see if that would work for us. We even took some lessons and started looking at boats, and we kind of quickly decided that that wasn't our route. And so then we thought, well, maybe we could be an RV family because we know quite a few of those, and there are a lot of, of um, homeschooling RVing families that we know, um, but that also didn't feel quite right to us. And so then we found out <laughs> that there are people who just travel with their families. And so that some have a home base, some give up their home base entirely, but that that was something that we totally could do. And if we wanted to homeschool anyway, um, we wouldn't necessarily be constrained by the school system calendar and all of those things. And so we thought, well, that's doable for our family. And so we started making plans to try and step in that direction. And um, obviously the hardest thing is how will we afford that and how will we do that? And even though we were both in tech careers, um, we wanted to find something that we could do remotely from anywhere. Um, and so we started trying to form businesses and that we tried a number of different things and, and our entrepreneurial efforts were just not working out for us. But so finally we thought, well, we just need to work remotely then. And so um, once my husband was able to find a remote development position, that was, that was it for us. Then we were like, okay, we have no reason to be stuck at home. <laughs> we can get out into the world now. And, and so that's what we did. Our first foray was that um, we went to the Project World School Family Summit, the first one they'd ever had in um, Puerto Morelos, Mexico. And we took uh, my mother-in-law with us for that. It was a week. And so that was our first big trip. And um, everybody loved it. We were all excited about it. And so then we started stepping up into longer trips and then even longer trips. And so we started doing a month or two months somewhere. And then finally, last year, we did our longest trip yet. We, it was five months that we were away from home. So now that's kind of what we're aiming for again this year is, um, I don't know if it'll be five months straight or if it'll be uh, maybe three months in, and then another three months trip. But it, again, I think it'll probably be, about half of the year away from home. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love um, how you guys just kept trying things and trying things and trying things, right? Because that's the point. So many people worry about failing, you know, worry that I, I've chosen this thing and I need to make it work and I need to make it work and I need to make it work rather than, you know, learning little bits from what's going on and taking another step. I, we tried the RV thing too. Like we thought about that as well when we first um, 
you know, after the first couple of years when they were home, it's like, oh, look, you know, we can we can totally redo and choose how we do our, our life. Right. And we went to a few RV shows and we we did a vacation where we rented one as well. And, you know, had that for for a week and, you know, tried living in it and everything. And mm -hmm. we too decided that that wasn't for us. But that was the fun part about it is is exploring it so that explore it enough so that you don't feel like, oh, gee, I wish, you know, that you're always looking back and wondering you right. know, because, because you don't know. Right. And, and you don't want, I didn't anyway, want that in the back of my head thinking, Oh gee, you know, maybe life would have been wonderful if we had just done this or whatever, but right. to take that right. And then try something else. And so you guys went through the boat and the RV and then trying little trips. And, and I love that you brought your mother-in-law and so she's totally bought in and understands why this is important to you and is, is part of that family picture right yeah. she absolutely is and I feel like we're very fortunate on that front because so many times um when you see things about unschooling you see people in non-supportive families and we've always been blessed to have a very supportive family and so we we actually combined households with, with her a couple of years ago in part uh to help facilitate our travel plans uh, because if we decide to go somewhere she can sometimes she'll stay behind sometimes she'll go with us but um it just didn't it just worked out well for us and so right now we each have a floor of the house she has the upper floor and we have the lower floor they're even decorated differently <laughs> um, but it's kind of worked out together and, and she's very supportive and involved in Jamie's life. And she also really likes to travel with us. So it's worked out really well for us. Oh, that's beautiful. I love hearing that. <laughs> and yeah, yeah and, and like you said, you said right at the beginning, you know, so much of your life has been alternative, right? And, mm -hmm. and to just be open to that, um, doing things differently now, even, you know, at that, at that level, at that living together level, which is, you know, oh, everybody needs to, you know, the conventional judgment that you need to have your own, your own home to be, you know, acceptable or whatever. So I, I think that's great because that works so well for all of you, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. 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 I would love to hear a little bit about what your unschooling days look like when you're traveling. Sure. Um, so our, I should say that when we travel, it is different from what people think of when they think of vacation. Yeah, so yeah. because we, we are able to slower travel, we usually rent places. So we will rent a house or rent an apartment. And so we usually have full access to all the things that we would have at home as far mm -hmm. as furniture and space and, and kitchen and all of those things. And so that makes a huge difference because we are able to set up an environment similar to what we have at home. And since our son's passions really are, he, he wakes up every day driven to work on his stuff. He really does. He has, he's, he has this idea in his head of what he's going to work on next. And so he's got his art or his game or whatever he's working on. And so we really need to allow time for that when we travel. Um, so it's different from vacation. We're not trying to cram activity into every day. But what we do is we try to plan about the afternoons. Usually we're always doing something out outside of the house. And so we're out exploring or we're out going to something or we're on an excursion. But then he still has the evenings to do his activities. And so he always knows that he has time for that. And so what our days typically look like is um, kind of a slow wake up in the morning and then uh, outside activities for the afternoon and then um, evenings kind of in work mode for myself and for him. And then my husband, unfortunately, because he still is in full-time work, often his full days are working just like they would be at home. And so again, it's, it's almost just more like living in a different place than it is how you would think of going on a vacation. Yeah, no, I, and, and that was something I was hoping to bring out because you, vacations are a very different thing and they can be they can be more high stress and also they can be like I know sometimes I'll see people comment like oh my kids you know 
we were we were away on vacation for a week or two weeks and they didn't play their games or you know whatever it is that people are stressing about and they're like oh back home i want them to be this person too but but that's we're kind of different people on vacation right whereas when you're talking about longer term traveling you're living there you're you're having setting up your life there and you're not trying to squeeze in what you're trying to squeeze in into into a, a vacation right when you're there for a limited time and you're like you kind of have the the whole week or two weeks kind of planned out the things that people want to visit and you know that's fun and awesome too like we have one coming up in november and i'm already happily planning what we're gonna do but right. this is a different thing right what you're talking about is is embracing this travel and and embracing the idea of of living your life just in a different area and you've got new things to look at you've got new foods you've got all, all sorts of a whole it's it's kind of isn't it like meshing your life and your lifestyle along with this whole new environment does that kind of make sense it is yeah, it absolutely is like that. And so that's one of the really nice things that we like about traveling um, is that it's kind of like the ultimate form of strewing. It just puts new things in your path all the time because you you can't help but have everything being different when you're in a new place. Yeah. You have the different language, the different food, the different style of dress, you know, people speaking differently. And all of that is just um, calling for your attention because it's different from how it is at home. Yeah. So, it, we get out and we do a lot of um, just we don't necessarily do a lot of big major excursions all the time either. You know, we might do one, one or two a week at most. Um, but then a lot of it is just exploring where we are and trying to live like the locals live and actually finding out what it's like to live in the in the new place that we are in. And so even something like going to the grocery store, if you're in a country that you've never been in before, is like yeah, a big adventure. An adventure. Right? So, <laughs> right. Right. And just wandering around those neighborhoods that you've never been in before. You know, we can walk each day. We can just walk in a different direction. And a lot of times we'll play Pokemon Go and that'll lead us to new spots which is really nice. Oh, that's so, brilliant. Yeah. I love that. That's that little piece of consistency too, but a whole new way to explore. <laughs> right, exactly. And it points out for you some things that you would never think to look yeah. for because it, you know, a lot of times the stops are attached to a statue or you know, street art or something like that that it brings your attention to all sorts of things. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. And yeah, just ordinary life things, like you said, like the grocery store, just going for a walk around the neighborhood in different directions. I imagine, you know, just going to local parks is like, it feels like that can be just as much fun and, and just as interesting as doing the bigger attraction-y kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of times it is. And a lot of times, um, the things that you remember the most or that turn out to be the most fun are those kinds of things that were not necessarily like, um, you know, we went to the museum or. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. And, and even like the little local restaurants and just, just the whole kind of ethos atmosphere of it. Right. Yeah. Right. So. And, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the other thing is that we, because Jamie is an only child, we try to plan our travels a lot of times around connecting with other home education or um, uh, world schooling groups if if the location that we're going to happens to have one of those. And so a lot of times we pick based around that. So then um, similar to at home where we have homeschool bowling or homeschool swimming each week, then we might join up with the activities from that group which is another great way to get to know the area and to experience the unique things there. So for instance, you know, we have the beach day when we're um, with the world schooling Andalusia group is, is quite different, you know, from the swimming that we have at home or whatever. So that's another thing that we try to do. Yeah. That's uh, I didn't even think of that, that whole world schooling network, right. And, and mm -hmm. local unschooling groups and the whole nother way to, get into and connect with the community that you're in, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. So if long-term travels or long-distance travels aren't really in a family's um, 
mindset right now, let's say. Um, but like we've been talking about how cool it is just exploring where you are. I think that exploration, that curiosity, that kind of mindset can be even can be valuable for people, even when they're not doing all this kind of traveling. It's really just about, you know, I, I, I think of it as embracing curiosity because I, I think of myself, you know, I can be like, OK, you know, I can stay home. I can stay home. And then all of a sudden, you know, three weeks pass by. But if I take that extra little no, you know, that that extra little push, like be curious about that. Go find out. It it opens up my days so much more. And I especially remember being sure to do that when my kids were younger and we're around and we were doing more things together is mm-hmm. to use use that and you know, knowing that we were choosing unschooling to give myself that little bit extra energy to like say, hey, let's go explore. And it always turned out so well when I did that. So I was just wondering if you could speak to that a little bit. Sure. Yeah, I definitely think that that curiosity aspect is huge. And that is one of the only things that that I really try to focus on with with our son is pointing out, though, uh, you know, I don't really necessarily have any goals or like educational philosophy or whatever. But (laughs) one of the things is that I try to instill that, that curiosity in him and try to try to bring up those questions and point those things out to him. And so um, when we think about it, we are all global citizens now and everything's like closer together. And so with him, we have specifically tried to emphasize some of those points, but you can see that in your daily life if you just start to look for it. So for instance, I am a Splatoon 2 player, which is a Nintendo video game. Yeah. Well, if you start to pay attention to it, you notice that there's people who are on at different times of day because they're in different time zones and their names are using different character sets and all these different things, this tiny little things that you see that you might not be looking for, but that just reinforce those kinds of things. Um, in the same way, we might look at it was one thing that we always did at my house when we were growing up, which may seem silly, but is we, we'd look at where the things were made. So for instance, we guess at supper, like where was our ketchup made or whatever, you know, like just talk about the different places, but um, we, we just try to keep that curiosity. And so you're absolutely right that you can do that wherever you are and start to look at that. And sometimes even in your own town or by going one town over, you see and experience things that you never would have thought of and that are so different from home you're like oh their street signs are a different color from ours and the police cars are different from ours and whatever like why is it different here but so um if you're just curious about it you start to see those differences right away um but then also if you are interested in the travel aspects and you can't travel there's a lot that you can do from home and those are the kinds of things that i did when i was growing up So for instance, one thing that you can do is you can order free brochures from the travel and like convention and visitors bureaus and they will just mail you tons of things. They will mail you, you know, these big flashy brochures and postcards and maps and all of this stuff and for free because they want, they want it. And it's really fun. And there's a lot to be, to, to look at and to learn about there. Um, In the same way, when we're, if you start to think about planning a trip you can get just excited, just as excited and learn just as much sometimes as if you actually went on the trip. And so we learned a lot of things um, when we were planning for our travels. For instance, Google Maps, in addition to having like street view of everywhere, they actually have virtual tours of all, almost all the major museums around the world. So you can go in and actually get a better view than when you went to that museum because there's no one in there and they filmed the whole thing and you can step step by step through every room. You can zoom in on the pictures. And so there's a lot of things that you can do like that if you're curious without ever leaving your house. I love that. Yes. Uh, Lissy and Michael too are very, it's really interesting. Lissy and Michael are very much into travel with Mm-hmm. enjoy traveling and the idea of traveling and and joseph is is not he's he's perfect he's happy you know what he said to me the other a while ago he's like you know i'm really good with my imagination right i don't need to be anywhere else in body because i'm going all these places in my imagination which is totally awesome but you know lissy has has for years had maps 
all around her room of the places, mm-hmm. you know, that she would love. She loves Vegas. And so we, for like a year, planned her 18th birthday was a trip to Las Vegas. Okay. Right? You know, like you said, and, and we got all this stuff mailed to us. You can go crazy um, online nowadays, right? And, mm-hmm. and I found these really funky things. Um, maps company that did really cool maps. So I got the the Las Vegas one and I got the London one, you know, she wants to go to Europe and, and surrounded herself. And then she had a big North American ones because we would do driving trips and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and, and like I said, our RV trip was, was across the, over to, we went to the Grand Canyon and stuff. Right. And so she would, she's always putting pins or little markers, all the places that we've been. Yeah. So you don't need to be literally traveling to embrace that interest. Right. And like you said, your son's interest, you're traveling and you can still embrace his interest. That is, that is not, you know, specifically about it. And Michael um, took last fall, he took a trip over and went to Norway and and the UK. Mm -hmm. And uh, (laughs) a few weeks ago, he's got a virtual reality um, set. And we did the, the Google um vr street view stuff right, in earth, yeah. norway and he you know so i had this on and he's beside me telling me oh yeah i went there i walked down that street like i was literally beside him enjoying his trip as he was describing it to me oh yeah i went in there and then they had this in there and oh i went to this park and i was recognizing um landmarks from his pictures and everything so there's just so <laughs> many ways to embrace that isn't there without leaving home at all <laughs> Exactly. Right. And, and you're right. It's just about that curiosity and that mindset to look for those things. And, and for, for me, I guess, to also point those things out because, um, because that's what you're interested in, right? Because you're interested, um, in not only just in travel, but as you said, in being curious and noticing the things around you. So at first, you know, like you said, it's different our motivation. Like you said at the beginning, it's not like I have a learning plan in mind or, you know, that I want them, but I'm a person who notices all these things. And that's interesting to me. So it's okay to share the things that we're interested in, right? Pointing it out. We don't expect them to go, Oh my gosh, mom, what a great find or or anything like that. You know, if they're, if they're like, you know, maybe they say, oh, cool. Maybe they take it and point something else out and point. You don't know. But being ourselves and sharing the things that we find interesting is great. It's just they get to know us better that way, too, don't they? Because they see the things that are interesting. And then they start bringing those things and pointing them out to us if we miss them. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I love the most now that my son is getting older is that you see more of that and they start to bring more of those interests to you. And so you get that peek into their head of the things that they're interested about. And so now we see him coming to us with that and we, we, he's starting to express those things to us, which is so neat. Yeah. It's so fun. And, and, and us being able to point out things that we think would be interesting for them too. Right. It's right. It does. It just keeps us, I think it just keeps us more open that that being curious just keeps us in a more open mindset where we're noticing things around us because we can be like fixed on what it is, whatever it is we're trying to do. We're trying to go out here. We're trying to accomplish this and not notice all those other things around us. But that's what fills up life. You know, what makes our days, uh, I don't know. We always talked about adventure. You know, not that we literally went, like I said, you know, we, we went vacations, right? We didn't do any longer term traveling yet anyway, mm-hmm. but that's what made our world feel big and interesting rather than being focused on accomplishing A, B, and C. With unschooling, we could slow down and not need to be so focused on the goals, but enjoy the journey the, the, along the way. Hey. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And that's, we, um, 
we have our blog for our family and we were trying to figure out what to call it. The one that talks about our travels and talked about our plans and, and all, everything from the beginning. And we ended up calling it our right sized life because you're always trying to, f- to find that fit. So what's the right size? And you try something and it might be not quite right in one way or the, one way or another. And then, so you pivot and you're just always looking for what, what is that fit? What feels good? So yeah, and- that makes sense. And like, like you said, too, what fits changes over time, right? That's, Mm -hmm. I love that idea of right size because it's, it's right size, you know, now, and, and we're always stepping towards things and enjoying things. And then, you know, something, maybe something changes along the way and you get a new clue and then you like, you do that little pivot and okay, oh, looks like this is going to feel right for us now. You know, that's, Mm -hmm. that's so fun. (laughs) Um, there was something else I wanted to dive into, um, going back to the, to the learning aspect. So with unschooling, we often talk about unschooling, how, how learning flows beautifully from following our children's interests, right? Um, Mm -hmm. instead of trying to direct it more with a curriculum, um, and, that's something that's quite easy to understand, right? Intellectually understand that. Oh yeah, you know, our interests can take us places and we're going to learn things versus trying to tell them what to learn. But in practice, it can be harder. I know it was harder for me to actually see because in your mind, you're imagining, okay, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, right? But mm-hmm. my my kids um, got really into some interests, like deeply into particular interests. And then I started worrying, oh, I thought, you know, when we began in schooling, our world was going to be so big. We were going to be doing this, this, and this. And yet when they became super interested in something, it felt like their world was getting smaller and smaller. And I started to worry about that. But as I started thinking through that, um, I realized that when they were focused on a passion um, and we embraced that and dove into it, it actually became a window to the world. So that was a huge kind of paradigm shift for me. So I was wondering if that had been, has been your experience with Jamie as well, because you've been talking about how he's really got that focus interest in, in game development and and games and art that way. Sure. Yeah. And uh, his interests have obviously changed over time when he was little. Um, Initially it was, it was toys. He was big into toys and he liked those channels on YouTube that uh, a lot of people complain about where they, they look at new toys and they do toy reviews and and all of that. And so um, then his, his interest kind of pivoted from there. And so that's definitely been our experience. And I can think of a really good example there from when he was about six, five, six years old, he's, he pivoted away from the toys more specifically into, um, Mario and Nintendo and the Nintendo toys and the plushes and um, what they call plush tubers, which are <clears throat> the people that make the videos with the plushes oh. toys. And so he was really, really interested in that. And so he hit, it seemed like that was all that he did and wanted to do was he was watching these on YouTube, these plush tubers with these Mario toys. And as they're acting out these stories and his entire being is about creativity and storytelling. That's always been his point of reference by which he does everything else. And so he was interested in this. And so he was interested in both the toy aspects, but also the storytelling aspects. And so when he said he wanted to start a YouTube channel, um, we were like, of course, that would be great. And, and so even though a lot of people were telling us, oh my gosh, no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to let him do that. You don't want to put him online. You know, when he's six years old, it's not. Um, instead, we decided to help him embrace that. And that led into so many other things. And so examples that I can give there. So um, obviously there are all the aspects of filming and recording and, and the YouTube aspects there. But from watching those channels, all of a sudden, he became interested in sewing because there was a channel where they were sewing custom things to go along with their plushes and so all of a sudden he wanted to learn how to sew and so you know we're learning like I'm learning with him but we're learning how to sew 
And so then he started sewing things for conventions, for the kids' marketplaces at the conventions, oh. the unschooling conventions that we went to. Yeah. So that turned into <clears throat> this big aspect for us there. But also that turned into um, he he started doing all his reviews and unboxings, uh, finding good sources for the plushes as well was a challenge, making sure that we got the quality ones and not the knockoff ones, you know, that yeah. took six weeks to get here from Taiwan or whatever, and then <laughs> ended up being really messed up. Um, so we kind of looked into that and we helped him to start an Amazon affiliate shop. So he actually had his own store online. Um, he picked out all the toys that were in it. He started um, dictating some blog posts um, to go along with that with his, his little store. And so he started uh, to earn money from that. And so that was another um, route that that took us. And then um, it, it just, he started to want to storyboard his videos. And so for the first time, he'd never been interested that really that interested in drawing or reading or not reading, um, writing things out by hand. But all of a sudden he started to do that. And we started to see all these different layers that came just from saying yes to letting him have his YouTube channel. And so it also helped with his speech because he needed the help with his speech. Then he started to hear how he was pronouncing things from seeing it recorded on, on video. And so it just started to move into all these different areas um, just from saying yes to the YouTube, the plush YouTube channel. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's spectacular. <laughs> I know. Right. And right? it's just right. Yeah. You, you have no idea. That's the thing. And I think that's where the trust piece comes in. And I think that's what, what can be hard, right? Because beforehand, we, we just have very conventional ideas about what things are. You know, for us, it was video games. Like when, when he was young and the thing my, my eldest wanted to dive into was video games. And, you know, you had all the conventional messages, just like you got with, oh my gosh, don't let your young child create a YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, don't let your kid play video games for a long time. And then there was that trust piece and the paying attention to where it went. It's that's I think that's a key. And let's see if you agree. That trust piece doesn't mean, okay, trust hands off. Let them just go off and do whatever they want. No, it's that trust and engage more help them more, help them accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. Because you, not only do you help them, you learn so much. You learn so much about them. You see all these different things and you can support them through, you know, like you said, you guys learned sewing together. You guys helped him with the filming. You know, you're, it's, it's trust and help, not trust and let them do whatever. Right. Right. I think that's always been um, a thing for us is we've always tried to, instead of um, just thinking, we try to encourage more. So we try to bring in more of whatever the interest was rather than um, trying to get him away from something because we thought he was watching too many cartoons or whatever. We started to to do that, to embrace those interests more and to bring in related things from there and sort of scaffold from there. And actually that's how he helped him to learn how to talk um, is by embracing those interests and actually using that for our speech therapy. Instead of sitting down and doing the flashcards and the speech sounds and that, I would sit with him and we would role play um, word world or um, back and forth as SpongeBob, you know, and those kinds of things work so much better by leaning into those interests instead of away from and trying to discourage him from those things. We've always found that it's so much better to go with those interests and to get engaged and involved and, and to go in that direction instead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what else I love about that? Cause this is, this is one of my like passions. I, I love this aspect of it because I think it's so important. Also, by doing more with them and diving in with them, you're also helping them explore and pivot with their interests. Like they will find 
what speaks to their soul so much faster when you're helping them, you know, explore their interests more deeply. Like I, I, I am sure that it would have taken me so much longer and maybe even my son longer because we found too, through embracing his video game interests, eventually that what was at the heart of it was the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Right. And when we look back, you can see through all his interests and all the things that he's done, story was at the root of it. But, you know, if I said, sure, play all the video games you want and stepped back, I would never have found that. Our, and then our conversations wouldn't have ended up focusing on that. So it wouldn't have been as obvious to him as quickly as it was that, ooh, it's story. And that's the kind of things to bring in and embrace and all that kind of stuff. It, it, it just helped us in innumerable ways, right? <laughs> right, right. I absolutely agree with that. And I think that's that connection piece that's just so important. Um, we have that connection. You, you work with them and you start to see those things where it's much different from you talk to pe- when you talk to people who are upset because they're their um, kid is just playing video games all the time. They don't know what they like about it or what what aspects of it um, are catching their attention. And so I think you kind of need to know those things to know how to steer, to help them to steer where their interests are going to go. And so um, it's it's definitely been the case for us that that uh, that has been so valuable, focusing on that connection piece and just getting to know what they like about it. Yeah. 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 So my kid, all my kid does is watch YouTube. It's like YouTube isn't the interest. (laughs) Like there's an entire world on YouTube, right? You need a little bit more. Same with video games. My kid plays, what kind of video games? What does he like? You know, there's just so much deeper than my kid likes video games or YouTube, right? (laughs) Okay. So I would love to know uh, what your favorite thing about your unschooling days is right now, just now in a little snapshot for posterity. (laughs) So I guess my favorite thing right now, um, I just get to spend a lot of time with Jamie as he is working on his projects is just seeing where he takes them because all of a sudden he comes up with this new art or these new concepts for his games and he's running them past me. And it's stuff that I never would have thought of. And it's just interesting and fascinating to me to see how his mind works and how it's different from mine. And he's coming to me with these words that he needs help to spell or whatever. And I, and, and you're wondering, when did you learn about that? Or where did you pick up that information? Or it's just, it's, so fascinating and fun for me to see how he's making those connections and how what that's turning into for him and and how that how that plays out into his interest in what he's producing so oh. I think that's the best part right now yeah yeah isn't that that's so amazing just to see it just just to see where their mind where their mind is and where it's going and how they're connecting things just it, it's being curious about about your own child right and right and it is so much more than like for me and it's so much more than we could have imagined right or I, I I keep thinking about what if I had tried to you know pour in tried to mold that I could never have done as good a job as the awesome places that they're taking it their lives themselves right Yeah, I totally agree with that. (laughs) And it's just so fun to talk with them. (laughs) It is. Yeah. And that's, like I said, one of it's, it's different from when they're little, right. As they start to get older and then, and you're starting to starting to see that and to see more like what those glimpses of what they might be like as an adult. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah, No, it's fascinating. Kids are fascinating. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me, Heather. It was so much fun. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, that's lovely. And before we go, where is the best place for people to connect with you online? Well, so I guess um, the easiest way is our website, which is a rightsizedlife.com, but also um, Facebook or Instagram. If, if you just look me up by name, Heather Clark, it's pretty easy to find me on either of those. Awesome. Thanks so much and have a great day. Yeah, thank you so much, Pam.